Hey, I'm Chris, and to get us going for the day, I have a question for you. When you first meet somebody, and then you walk away after a few minutes, what are the things you remember about that person? Do you remember what they were wearing, like their clothes? Do you think about their eye color? Or do you think about their personality? Maybe you start thinking about how friendly they were being or how laid back they were. If you formed an opinion on that person, it could be right, but you could also be completely wrong. We often only see people through our own experiences. So today we're gonna find out how God sees people. Check this out. Welcome to Linda's Aussie Adventures. Did you know that wombat poop is actually cube shaped and used to mark its territory? Hi, it's Linda and it's so great to be back with you again. We don't have to look very far in our world today to see that so often people get judged on really superficial things. Sometimes people miss out on a job because of their gender or their skin colour. Sometimes even because they don't have the right body type to be a server in that restaurant. But as Jesus followers, we know that's not what we should focus on in people. And that reminds me of today's big idea, that God helps us to see people the way he sees them. Previously, we've learned about Moses and the Israelite people who were freed from slavery. Well, here's what happened after they left Egypt. They spent 40 years wandering in the wilderness because they were too stubborn to listen to God. During that time, God gave Moses 10 commandments for the Israelite people to follow, but clearly they broke them often, but God gave them a way to be forgiven and cleansed from their sins. Eventually, the Israelites came to the land that God had promised them, called the Promised Land, but Moses died before he got to enter it. But there was a new leader called Joshua who led the Israelites into the Promised Land. When Joshua and the elders of his generation died, the Israelites no longer followed God's way. They had really short attention spans like us. They began to serve other false gods, and so God gave them a leader called a judge who would lead them in God's way. They would follow this leader, but when that leader died, they would go back again to doing bad things and serving other gods. It was kind of like a cycle. These judges were Othniel, Ehud, Shamgar, Deborah, Gideon, Tola, Jair, Jephthah, Ibzan, Elon, Abdon, Samson, Eli, and Samuel. When Samuel was the judge, he was also a prophet, and the Israelite people told him that they wanted God to give them a human king. Samuel was sad about this because he felt like he'd kind of failed at his job, but God told him that it wasn't his fault. Really, the Israelites were saying that they didn't want God as their king. So, even though it wasn't God's best for them, he gave the Israelites what they wanted, a king. So Samuel was sent to anoint the first king of Israel, Saul. And at first, things were going great, and it seemed like Saul was really gonna honor God. But it became pretty clear that Saul really wanted to do things his own way. And so God sent Samuel to anoint a new king. And today's God story is about exactly that. It comes from 1 Samuel chapter 16, and it's about when Samuel was sent to find the new king. Now Jesse had eight sons, and when Samuel saw his first son Eliab, he thought, this must be who God picked. But let's read what God said to Samuel. But the Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. People tend to look at our outer appearance, but God looks at the heart, so let's hold on to that. So Jesse had seven of his sons walk in front of Samuel, and each time Samuel said, the Lord hasn't chosen him either. So finally, Samuel asked, are these all of your sons? And Jesse said, no, my youngest is actually out looking after the sheep. Now the reality is that probably no one would have assumed that the youngest son would be chosen. But when David, the youngest son, showed up, God made it really clear to Samuel that he was the one and he should get up and anoint him. So Samuel did what God told him to do. And the spirit of the Lord was with David in a really, really powerful way from that day forward. It's really amazing that we can see so clearly through this story that God wasn't interested in what David looked like or how old he was or how strong he was in comparison to his brothers, but that God was interested in David's heart. And even though David was the youngest, God chose him. The more we get to know God and grow closer to him, the more we can learn to love just like him. And God helps us to see people the way he sees them. This is so helpful to remember in our everyday lives. When you're at school with friends or around people who are judging other people, remember that you can see that them the way that God sees them. So maybe someone's being a jerk to you or someone rushed past you and pushed something out of your hands and didn't apologize. Or maybe you're talking to somebody and it just doesn't seem like they're paying any attention to you. But just remember, we don't know what's going on in everybody's lives all the time.
time. Something might be really hard right now or their parents might be fighting or they might feel really sick at the moment. But if you pray to God, remember that He can help you see people the way that He sees them. That's it from me today. I'll see you next time. In that God story, we heard that David's family didn't even call him when Samuel asked to see Jesse's sons. This just shows us that they didn't think David could be the one to get chosen. Do you realize that sometimes we make the exact same mistake? Sometimes we'll look at someone and just assume that they can or can't do something specific. I wanna show you Aisha's story. She works for Urban Promise and they run programs for kids after school and these kids all live in community housing. They get to teach them about Jesus, have fun, play games, and coach them to become leaders in their own communities. Check this out. I guess when, you know, when you're younger and everyone, they're in middle school and they start to get into that point where they're wearing makeup and, you know, they want attention. Um, I noticed that the guys would, I don't know, kind of go more towards them and not to me. And so that made me feel as if I wasn't pretty enough. And it didn't help that my father wasn't around to kind of tell me that I'm his little princess or that I'm beautiful. Um, hearing from a male figure that actually wants to see me succeed and actually loves me, um, yeah, I kind of, I don't know, I just felt like I wasn't as pretty as the other people, so. So when I was in Urban Promise, I interacted with someone named Brett, and he was a leader at the time. He was heading up the youth program. He was the first person that I really saw as a father figure. He cared for me in that way and didn't just care for me in those two hours of camp. He was there for me outside of it. So um, that was the first time I really felt that a male figure actually cared about me. So someone very close to me, an intern um, at Urban Promise actually, she had shown me this verse and it's in Psalms 45, 11, and it says, let the king be enthralled by your beauty. Honor him for he is your Lord. And when I really started to take in that verse, I began to realize that I don't need to find my identity in things of this world, but in Christ. And through him, I, I don't know, my beauty shines through that and people are able to see that now. So I ended up at Urban Promise, working as a supervisor for the program I was volunteering at during college, Upward, which is working with the high school students. Our main thing is that we want to raise up disciples. We want to expose the community to Jesus and show them that there's a God who really truly loves them. We also want to create a positive space where kids can just be kids and do fun, crazy, wacky stuff. So, um, for instance, in the summertime, every Wednesday, we have this thing where we get all the youth and children all together, and it's called Civil War Day. So it's a bunch of different superhero-themed games. Um, all the street leaders get dressed up in different heroes. Um, my character is Storm. I had worked throughout high school as a street leader at Urban Promise, and then, um, but because I'd grown up like sewing and I was also part of the fashion in my high school, I was like, this is something that I want to pursue. So um, I ended up actually going to school for fashion on a full scholarship. So I was like, okay, God, I'm not too sure what you want me to do. Cause you know, I got a full scholarship to go to fashion school. So, um, but all my high school students, they graduated. So as a gift, I decided that, um, you know, I have the skill, let me put it to use. And so I would make their prom dresses if they graduated from high school. Sewing these dresses is a very big bonding experience for us. Um, I mean, we've been through so much, and then when I get to do these dresses, we have a lot of fittings. So through those times, we get to discuss and go deeper and talk about other things, how they're doing in school and stuff like that. And it's just a moment, the look on their faces when I drop off the dress, and usually I'm there on the day when they're going to prom and they're all prettied up and stuff like that. I There's not a better feeling. Like, I get paid sometimes to do little sewing jobs on the side, but nothing, nothing beats the feeling of seeing them see themselves um, and feeling beautiful in the dress that flatters them and looks best on them. This custom dress just made for them. So uh, that feeling is amazing to me. It's, yeah, I love it. Through Urban Promise, you know, the leaders there, they really showed me that, like, God doesn't just see me, he notices me, and he believes that I am beautiful. And that feeling is, is priceless. Um, and it really has helped me become the woman that I am today. And I want so much for my girls to know that and to understand that they, they are beautiful and that God sees that. And I know that for a lot of them, they've been through what I've been through. 
um, not having a father around. And so I think it's so important, especially with media, putting all these stuff on us that we have to be a certain way or we have to look this way to, in order to be beautiful and to get attention. Um, yeah, being at work, it creates a platform for me to encourage them to show them that they are beautiful and they don't need to do all these things because God has made them exactly the way that he intended. They are perfect the way they are. So God doesn't just see them, he notices them and he understands and he loves them. He knows that they are beautiful just the way they are. All the teenagers at Urban Promise look like they're having a great time. And I think that has a lot to do with what Aisha is modeling to them. She learned how to look at herself and others the way Jesus does. And now she can show young people how to do the same thing. So let's get into our small groups and see what this looks like in our own lives. 